All right, let's take a look at G, GMD, A1, worksheet number one. This is just a nice introduction into the basics of perimeter and circumference. Um, we quickly jump to more interesting shapes just because these are old topics for us. And uh, at this level, we need to kind of go after something a little more interesting. The first thing I want to talk about is the development of, of the early stages of how they were able to go after circumference of a, a circle. Uh, it's a difficult thing because it's not made up of segments but this curved uh, environment and uh, and so the early discoverers that went after it started to use the regular polygons and they noticed that as they moved up in the number of sides in the regular polygons that the shapes became more circle-like. In other words this octagon here is very circular-like and if you continued that uh, iterative process to say a hundred gone, you would almost be a circle. The, the line segments would be so uh, minute that it would be forming almost this circular idea. And they were able to get a pretty good estimate on what that, uh, using radius and, and, and the relationships, uh, they were able to kind of say, well, you know, what if this radius, how does that radius relate to that perimeter? that helped them approximate the value of pi uh, and so pi over the years was um, you know 22 over 7 was some values that was used uh, they knew that it was between 3 and 1 7 and 3 and 10 71st or something like that using a process like this but we know that uh, in a circle the circumference uh, the circumference is pi times d and uh, that is uh, or in this case uh, 2 pi r because two radiuses make a diameter and so these are interchangeable depending on what information you have and this would calculate the uh, circumference or the perimeter of the circle. Um, I just wanted to show you three examples then we'll do a bunch uh, under the uh, Elmo here just to give you some, a taste of what's coming. Here, um, you seem to be missing some of the sides to be able to come up with the perimeter. Uh, because this is a right angle, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to help you out here. Here, uh, you've got what's called a composite shape, <coughs> and you can, uh, all of these um, intersections uh, are perpendicular or parallel to each other. Uh, the environment in here is that can be assumed. So if you know this is 10, this is 3, what leaves uh, for this length is 7 because 7 and 3 make 10. Same thing here, 8 is the total, uh, 3 is this amount, so this would leave us with a 5 down here, and now you could add them up. The U happens to be one of my favorite perimeter or area questions uh, because of its unique nature. You get some straight lines, which is kind of nice, but then you get these two curves, and really, you just have to think of this is half half of a circle with this radius so you do half of a circumference so you divide this value by two and this is also half of a circles circumference and so you'd find its radius which would be from here to here find its full circumference and divide it by two let's look at some more here under the Elmo just looking at basic perimeters, uh, you would know most of these, uh, as we've already spoken to. Uh, a square is just four equal sides. A rectangle is two equal lengths and two equal widths. A triangle, you just add up all of its sides. And then any regular polygon, in this case uh, a regular pentagon, has five congruent sides. So those are just basics. Uh, the one that's a little more interesting, of course, is a circle. A circle doesn't have segments. Um, and so we say, well, how do you find the circumference? Um, you, you notice uh, a pattern here, a very tiny circle. There's its diameter. We find that the diameter, uh, three of them fit almost perfectly into that circumference. It's three and a little bit. When we made a bigger uh, circle, we find out the same thing, three of them and a little bit. So what we gain to understand is that there's a proportionality here, a constant there that's happening, whether you're smaller or bigger. These are similar shapes. And so there's a ratio, uh, a similarity, a proportionality. And we find out that that is certainly um, 
that magical power is what we come to know as pi, which is 1, 2, 3, point one four and on and on and on and on it goes. Now, how did we come up with pi? Or how did we move to that? That's that's an entire uh, investigation of its own. Pi is an amazing number. But let me just talk to you about uh, a strategy Archimedes used here. First of all, his idea was that he could approximate what a circle looks like using polygons. So here's regular polygons. Here's the triangle, the square, the the, the pentagon, the hexagon. Uh, if you go to an octagon, uh, you get uh, even more so becoming circle-like in its shape, and so on. And eventually, if you do enough of those sides, basically, if you did a hundred gone, you would almost, almost be circle-like. And so the idea is the way that they were able to approximate pi and its value and those types of things is by looking at uh, making uh, not hexagons, as in this case, it's just an easy way for you to understand it. But basically, uh, they used, you know, 100 gons or 50 gons. And because those were regular polygons, they could actually find out their um, circumference, or their perimeter in their case. And, their, and the perimeter, the perimeter of these, basically, with the more sides you get, approaches that circumference. And that allowed um, the greats back in the day to come up with values for pi, like 3 and 1 7th, between 3 and 1 7th and 3 and 10 71st. Or I think it was the Egyptians used 70, 22 over 7, which is 3.14, and on and on it goes. Those are not what pi is, but they approximated it. Anyways, uh, let's take a quick look then at, at some of the kinds of questions that you can end up doing here. Um, Again, as you know, you can use circumferences pi d or circumferences 2 pi r. So here uh, you got the radius, so 2 times 4 is 8 pi um, certain centimeters. The e means exact, so we leave pi alone in there. 4 times 2 is 8 pi. Here you're given the circumference is 6.5 pi, and then it would be pi d on this side. The, these would divide out and the diameter would be six and a half centimeters. Here again the radius is seven so it's two pi r. We would get 14 pi as the exact size of that circumference and so on. So here uh, again you're looking at perimeters and uh, let's just look at a couple of these tricks and then we'll call it good. Um, some of the tricks are giving you a full length side, giving you a partial. So 11 minus 2 is 9 here. Uh, this is 8 minus another 2 would be 6 here. And then you would add all of those up. You see how I'm doing that though? 11 is the full length. Uh, 2 is this. They're, they are parallel and perpendicular. So you know that that's 2 minus 11 is 9 and so on. Here, kind of tricky, you're missing this little length here. But the Pythagorean theorem is always helpful. So if I did this, this would be 6. 10 minus, uh, 18 minus 10 is 8. 6, 8, and 10 would be this value. I just used the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, if you do the math, you'll get 10 for that. And then you just add all that up. I like this one because um, it's half of a circumference. So circumference is 2 pi r. And then it's a full diameter, right, of 8. So, but it's half of this, because a whole one would be 2 pi r. So it's just pi times r, which is 4, and the diameter is 8. So your final answer in an exact form would be 4 pi plus 8. Or you could turn that into a decimal. You, you could use your calculator, 4 times 3.14 or whatever, you know, that whole bit, and add it to 8. But most of these will ask for the exact answer just to teach you how to keep pi in an answer and get used to that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Maybe one more tricky one. Let's, uh, let's try this one. So we're doing circumference here. That's pretty cool. So it's half of the first circumference, 
It's half of that little inside circumference. And then it's these two pieces here. So these cancel, so it's pi times that radius, which is, let's see, if that's 2, this is 4. So that's 2 and 2 is 4, would be that radius. And then um, this radius for this inner one is 2. Uh, let's see, is it? It is 2, so it would be pi times 2, okay, because this is 2, this would be 2. And then 4. So you get 4 pi, 2 pi, that's 6 pi, plus 4 would be its exact answer again. And so on. And all you're going to do, one thing I guess I'd say to you is, is when you're asked for an exact answer, usually it means that there's going to be a pi piece and then a non-pi piece. You can't add these together and get 10 pi because this has no pi in it. So it's 6 pi plus 4. Now again, if you wanted not to be exact, um, but these mostly say E for exact, but that would be 6 times pi, which I'm just putting into my calculator, plus 4, which is, you know, 22.85 approximately. But again, these are asking for an exact answer.